James and Liz are going to step away for a second, and I I guess I'll look at challenges. How do we challenge after that? So uh, like hard, part. relentlessly, and without mercy. No, no, no. Let's let's go. Let's keep talking about real stuff here. Mm -hmm. I think one of the most memorable moments I have had in the past couple of years is when, oh, I hope I get this name right, uh, Dr. Joe has called in, who is one of the one of the first people to have an actual role in a hospital as like the the doctor of gaming that's <laughs> that's now his official job title right now and has talked about um the exact i mean we can say a lot about yeah this game this game system shows up at a hospital and the kids are happy and this is great and he's just like well no here let's talk about the details um, we've come up with a catalog of how different games can help out different children in, in situations. If they're long-term patient, these are the type of games we use. If they're in a short-term thing, if they're in acute pain, this is how we use it. And one of the most amazing situations that I would never even thought about was the use of uh, VR, the use of virtual reality to let children disassociate from especially traumatic and scary procedures they have to go through and they can use something like vr so they don't have to use sedation which can be really really heavy and have you know physical consequences on the body like we can either use this chemical or you can you can go and escape in this game for a little bit of time like that and that hits you and you're just like oh my god this is this Oops. is amazing this is so impactful <laughs> i mean it's it's also i mean uh, like the you know the, the the face mask thing that liz had to deal with um uh now a lot of there's, there's all this stuff with like mris and um cat scans and these you know where where you know like somebody has to go into this huge machine where they have to lie very very still uh and it's claustrophobic it makes loud noises and 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 um flashing lights and things and it can be very stressful um and they're also very expensive and are are you know running almost all the time and so they can't kind of show a, a kid what it will be like because it's always in use and they've there's all sort there's some really interesting um stuff about using vr to kind of uh um uh walk somebody through what they're going to experience when they go in and do um an mri or something um, a couple people in chat talking about situations that work in using virtual reality for blood samples, which can be stressful for young children. Oh, yeah. Uh, using VR as pain management in place of medicine. And that application, it's like, yeah, you can think of, I like games, therefore the kids must be so happy with that, but taking it a step further. And um, that blows my mind. Oh, welcome. Welcome, Laser. Welcome to hello. our Fields time here. Yes, I was experiencing Phil's, Phil's time without having a camera on me, like a selfish person. I'm about to lose one. <laughs> hey, you do you, friend. Uh, the, yeah, the the alternate, not not necessarily gaming, but technology uses that um, we've seen over the years with the uh, the various medical professionals. It's just something as simple as uh, an iPad being used to make calls between family members who can't physically be in the same room. I mean, that, that kind of thing has been uh, much more widely used over the last year, but that for, for kids who are severely immunocompromised over the last few years, that's been a, a, a major help apparently um, for parents to be able to, to see their kids when they're in isolation wards. Um, or there was one story that uh, some child's play members told us about where uh, the uh, it was either one or two kids, I forget exactly, but the, they were all in a car accident, the, the parents and, and the kid, and they couldn't be in the same uh, physical location. So the, uh, the nurses and the doctors were using iPads to have them communicate uh, from various areas of the hospital, which was, which was awesome. Uh, which is is something we wouldn't have been able to do like 20 years ago um mm -hmm. it's wonderful to see all these new uses of technology for uh for medical care yeah yeah um so for people looking for more questions of why do we do this other than just for fun and games and mm -hmm. and for community it's well because we all believe that this is a very 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 deserving cause that does a lot of good
and the child's play uh child's play charity dot org uh website of course has all, all sorts of um information about the uh various projects that they are doing yeah you might start off with just the toys and games but now they're doing yeah all these actually funding positions um uh for for and training for the um for the medical professionals um as well as going into you know uh uh shelters and um uh, doing awesome. advocacy work and all that kind of great stuff so and and things like their uh it, even for people who are not super technologically aware, like medical professionals aren't necessarily most the most up to date on uh, what games are good for uh, different medical situations. They're more focused on the the uh, the day to day care. Uh, the Child's Play put out the uh, the therapeutic video gaming guide or gaming recommendations uh, so that you can you can grab from their site as well. And for it's split up by the type of care that you need, whether it's a uh, pain management or boredom from from different lengths of stay or like, anxiety. They've, they've got it all broken down into sections, what games uh, you can uh, try to help with various types of care. And it's awesome. 